We currently measure hurricanes on a scale of destruction, from 1 to 5, with Category 1 being the least destructive and Category 5 the most. But hurricanes are changing because of climate change. Do we need to add a Category 6? First things first, let's talk about what a hurricane is. A hurricane is one name for a class of storms called tropical cyclones. A tropical cyclone is a type of storm that forms over warm seas and oceans. Warm water, over 26 degrees Celsius, heats the air directly above it, but water also evaporates into that air. The result is warm, moisture-laden air just above the surface of the sea. Warm air wants to rise, that's how hot air balloons work, so the warm, moisture-laden air shoots upwards, and the higher it rises, the more it cools down. Eventually, it cools down enough that the moisture contained within condenses to form clouds, and those clouds start producing rain. Air then rushes in to fill the partial vacuum left behind by the rising air. But it doesn't fall straight into the partial vacuum. It spirals. This is what we call the Coriolis effect, and it happens because the Earth is spinning on its axis. The spiralling air fills the partial vacuum left behind and gets heated up by the warm ocean below, takes on moisture and then rises, forming more clouds and gets replaced by more air and the cycle starts again. The result is a storm that looks like this from the top, a huge area of spinning air and that looks like this in cross-section, a thick cloud layer chucking down rain with lots of rising air and an eye in the middle. We call such a storm a hurricane if it occurs in the Atlantic Ocean or the Northeast Pacific Ocean. In the Northwest Pacific, we call them typhoons, while in the Indian Ocean and Southern Pacific, we just call them tropical cyclones. They're all the same type of storm. Regardless of name, they can all be dangerous. The high wind speeds, up to 165 miles an hour, can destroy buildings. The winds, combined with the low air pressure, push seawater into a huge bulge called a storm surge that can be over 10 meters high. That's taller than two double-decker buses stacked on top of each other, causing flooding far inland. And the rain that falls from tropical cyclones can be extreme. In just six days in 2017, Hurricane Harvey dumped over one and a half meters of rain on Texas, leading to huge flooding. Flooding, whether from rain or the storm surge, is the most dangerous part of a tropical cyclone, leading to huge property damage and loss of life. We measure the destructiveness of a hurricane, so a tropical cyclone in the Atlantic or Northeast Pacific, with the Saffir Simpson scale. This is based on the highest average wind speed, 10 meters above the ground, anywhere in the storm. To be classed as a hurricane, a storm needs to have sustained winds over one minute of at least 74 miles per hour. That gets you classed as a Category 1 hurricane, with each subsequent category having a higher average wind speed requirement. In order to be a Category 5 hurricane, you need to have sustained winds of at least 157 miles per hour. For reference, that's faster than the wind you'd experience sat on top of an intercity train. These winds are fast. So the scale represents the destructiveness of the hurricane. The higher the category, the more destructive it is. But the scale's only based on the wind speed in the hurricane. It doesn't account for, for example, the height of the storm surge associated with the hurricane. And as I said at the beginning, that's not the only problem with the scale. Hurricanes, and tropical cyclones more broadly, are changing. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, or IPCC, says that the fraction of tropical cyclones we class as intense, meaning categories 4 or 5, have likely increased over the past few decades. And additionally, that the average latitude of tropical cyclones in the Northwest Pacific has moved towards the pole. This is probably because of a combination of natural factors and human-caused climate change. Looking to the future, it is very likely that the fraction of tropical cyclones we class as intense will increase. But the total number of tropical cyclones we see in a given year will probably stay the same, or maybe slightly decrease. In other words, climate change isn't going to make hurricanes or typhoons more frequent, but when they do happen, it will make them more intense. In terms of wind speed, but also the amount of rain that they drop, and especially combined with rises in sea level, the amount of flooding their storm surges will cause. 
We can be very confident that this century, hurricanes will get more damaging and more deadly, both because more and more people are living by the coast and building impermeable surfaces like roads that make flooding worse, and because hurricanes themselves are becoming more intense. So as the fraction of hurricanes we class as Category 5 is expected to increase, does it make sense then to add a Category 6? For example, sustained winds over 192 miles per hour. That way, the public could be told if a Category 5 storm is coming, pretty bad and they should probably get somewhere safe, or a Category 6 storm is coming, very bad and they should definitely get somewhere safe. Or is adding a Category 6 to the scale only going to confuse the public, who may not be aware of what Category 5 or 6 even means? In fact, might it not make more sense to completely ditch the Saffir-Simpson scale and replace it with a new scale that actually reflects the risk due to flooding from a hurricane, whether from rainfall or storm surge? After all, that's what causes the greatest damage and loss of life. Or is that just going to confuse people even more? What do you think? Do you think the Sathir Simpson scale is fit for purpose, as it is? Or should we add a Category 6? Or should we completely get rid of the scale and build a new one? The right answer is the one that you think will save the most lives.